Josh Todd reached out to me and said, Hey Robbie, I've been having success with Thunder this format. And my face was literally like, oh, You are being successful with Thunder? And I was like, Yo, send me the list. Let's, let's see what you've got going on here. How is your deck actually functioning uh, under, you know, the new rules? Because, you know, having lost Colossus... This deck lost really one of the best things that it had going for it. Well, come to find out, your deck doesn't have to rely on Colossus. Now, you have to rely on Titan now. And the problem with Titan is he, he can be relatively hard to get out because it's three Thunder Dragon monsters to make it. And then you can either summon it by banishing a Thunder monster. Okay, you can summon it by its requirements. Or you can bring it out by banishing a Thunder monster and a thunder fusion monster you have so if you open up the instant fusion you can step into this outside of that it's gonna be a little bit harder to obtain but when the thunder monster effect is activated in the hand even during damage step quick effect you can destroy one card on the field and then we also have the ability to play the grind game of if this card be destroyed by card effect you can banish two cards from your graveyard instead and this thing stands at a hot 3200 so josh was like the he was like, the deck primarily functions going second by using Titan's card destruction effect to deplete the opponent's resources. Then you OTK with Titan, Blackluster, Avermax, plus any of your other big monsters. You can also go first and set up an IP, Abyss Dweller, and a Titan to interrupt with the opponent's plays. Alright, so that's one big thing I want to say here. Your deck still does what you do. You're still able to grind out games, and you're still going to have a slightly easier chance to do so. Uh, but the thing is, you now have to use bigger monsters to do so, because you don't have the ability to hide behind the Colossus and basically play chicken with your opponent. All right? I think it's one of the nice things that they did with this deck when they balanced it out by taking Colossus away from it was we effectively shut down a lot of the, the real synergy that it had. So now that we're a slower potato in the format, you're going to have to rely on those interruptions, and like I said, that grind game to really get there. And I think Josh does a fantastic job at building the main deck here. Uh, one side note here, um, we'll talk about this again when we get in the side, but he said he wanted to take out the Called by the Graves and start playing Denko Sekas now, because literally there's nothing scarier than to a back row deck than watching Denko Seka rip out cards from your opponent and just put your opponent in such a bad position that they're like, what, what do I do? Like, I'm, I'm losing at this point. So I feel it. Um, I, I do like that consideration for the side. So monster lineup here. So we have two copies of Aloof Lupine. On normal summoning, banish one monster from your hand. The banish one from the deck of the same type as that monster. And if this card is destroyed by battle, or if this card's owner's possession is destroyed by opponent's card effect, you can target one of your banished monsters and recruit it back to your hand. So, still one of the best combo cards we have in the deck. Same thing with Solar. Getting the ability to dump your Thunder monster. Getting the ability to produce the token, by the way, as the Thunder Extender, so that you can step on into easier things. I do still like this. Also, when you're going into that Dweller play, hello, level four, you're going to need this guy. We have one copy of Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the beginning for those standard OTK turns where you plow through your opponent's field and they're like, what do I do? And then we're only playing one copy of Lavenir. Uh, Lavenir is still a fantastic card for this deck, but we're slightly slower. We have to rely more on our standard boss monsters to get us places. So Josh did a fantastic job at getting, I, I think, the correct ratio for this. We have two copies of Phantasme. Quite honestly, three can bulk down the deck. Um, it also depends on if you're going to be playing against a lot of solid at your event. If you're going to play against a lot of solid, then this would probably be a card that you might want to consider upping. But if you start messing around with the ratios of this, you're going to start messing around with like your extenders and things like that. It's not something you want to do. Now, we play triple copies of Luna, the Dark Spirits. This cannot be normal summoner set. Must be special summoned from your hand by banishing one dark monster from your graveyard. You're telling me I can trigger those hot thunder effects? Ooh. But this is also going to be a extender for the deck, another level four, as we said, to get to those cards like Dweller to give you the chance to play the game. And if you can't play the game, well, you're not going to be doing Thunder things. So 
yes, these are your only level fours that you're going to have. So bear with it. It'll, it'll all make sense. We have triple copies of Thunder Dragon, it, the OG. This card is still really good, especially once you set the Titan up on the field and your opponent's going to start having issues with those constant blowing off effects. Now, we're still playing triple copies of Dragon Dark. It's still your core searcher. You can still do it on your opponent's turn to load one up into the graveyard. Um, outside of that, there's nothing too real to say about this. Um, the card still does what the card does for the deck. Now we have triple cop, or excuse me, we have one copy of Dragon Duo. This is still another one of your large boss monsters. Um, getting a Light and Dark in the graveyard for single use for this should not be an issue in the long run. I know a lot of people used to like two of this, but once again, you don't have, your, your engine's consistency has been lowered. Now with it being lowered, you can't just go herder der, here go all my boss monsters out on the field, hope you have an answer. Uh, you have to kind of, you're trading off the big Warhammer monsters for consistency. And that consistency gives you that layer of security that allows you to play the deck. Um, we have triple copies of Dragonhawk, still our extender of choice for reviving and resetting our hand. We have triple copies of Dragon Matrix, interruptions through the opponent's turn, literally. 500 extra boost, get an interruption, all right? That's all we're trying to do here. And then we have triple copies of Dragon Roar himself, rounding out our main deck Thunder lineup. I, th I think ratios look very solid on this. Um, I know people like to get cheesy and try to play like, I can play two of this, I can play, you know, maybe one of this, nah. A at this point in time, you're still Turbo Make Titan, you're gonna have to, you know, compensate for that, per se. Now, spells, Triple or Darkness, still very much mandatory. You can still fuel it, you should have no problem being able to resolve this and do what you want to do with it. One Foolish Barrel, check. One Gold Sarcophagus, check. Triple copies of the Instant Fusion. All right, well, Instant Fusion through Camion Wizard still gets you into your Titan to interrupt your opponent. All right, that's all I could ever ask for. Now, we're playing the two copies of the Thunder Dragon Fusion. This still gets you in to make Titan. Titan is still going to be your game plan. Titan is going to be fantastic for you. I do think going forward, though, that two is going to be the number. Um, I know a lot of players are like, nah, you can play one, it's fine. You don't have Colossus anymore to hide behind. You've effectively lost three boss monsters from your deck. Fusion at two is right, all right? And then we have two copies of Evenly Matched rounding out the main deck here. Um, when your game plan is to go second and you rip the Evenly off the top, it's pretty good. Also, the deck can go between first and second. Um, I guess I can make the argument that you would want to see the third evenly matched, but I feel like that's just kind of bogging it down a little bit too much. 41 cards, I don't know how consistent it would be versus the standard two, but we're trying to keep it as consistent at 42, or at 40. Down here in the extra deck, we have one some Summer Summoner, of course, still getting that Thunder Revive on the opponent's turn, so slightly more valuable. We have one Avermax, one Link Karibo, one Unicorn, one, Mer one Nightmare Phoenix, one copy of IP Masquerade, and now we have Cloth Eep. So, Cloth Eep now grants us the ability to... Okay, so we set up a Titan. Since we've summoned a Fusion Monster, we can swap summon one level 4 or lower monster from our graveyard. So as long as we see some combination of these, we can actually revive our other level 4 to set up for our Abyss Dweller play on the side, which is actually pretty good for more interruptions. We have the one Soldier of Chaos, one Appaloosa, one Abyss Dweller, Triple Titan, of course, one Thousand Eyes Restrict, and the one copy of the Camion Wizard. Side deck here, we have triple copies of Dimension Shifter. This is still the only deck in the format that can support this card. This card still blows out certain matchups, literally. I think you get a free win just being a Thunder player resolving this against the Spiral player, because they just, like, dead halt in their tracks. We have Triple Draw and Lockbird for Spiral. Triple Called by the Grave, and like I said earlier, consideration to cutting these for Denko Sekas for those heavier back row decks. Triple Twin Twister for back row removal, and then triple copies of Dynamiscus just for that generic spot removal away from the opponent. So that is our rundown of Josh Todd's interesting Thunder Dragon list. What do you guys think? Thunder Dead? Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I think that this is very interesting. 
for the most part. And well, guys, I'm out. Peace. The ride never truly ends. Thank you, patrons, for helping support the channel. Without you guys, I don't know if I'd still be doing this. And for those of you that like Cardfight Vanguard, Banco 40 is here for all your content needs. And those of you asking if I sell cards, mcoolgames.com for all your trading card game needs. Check the description for more interesting info. Thanks for watching, guys.